Welcome to the Blam Podcast. Grab yourself a coffee, are you ready? Enjoy and make it last. If you're out on the town or just hanging around, it's the Blam Campfire Podcast. We'll sit around the fire telling stories with a marker in our hands. Sipping it slow, hope you're ready to go. It's the Blend Campfire Podcast. Welcome to the Blend Podcast, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on a, a on a lovely um, spring afternoon um, in just outside Perth, and it's you really feel spring in the air, and it's great. I, I love. Um, to think that you know winter is past a little <laughs> um and these lovely mornings um yeah remind us of what the weather can be like um but yeah welcome mel thank you um and for those of you who don't know mel is one of our uh is our manager at blend dundee and has been um since we started and blend uh mel is our second longest employee um to been there right at the beginning and actually the only employee that's worked in all three shops Ooh. um so has experience and and pretty much knowledge of all our systems <laughs> um, right from the beginning. So welcome, Bill. Ble- uh, Mel. Ble- Ble- welcome, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, and and you know, I'm excited about this talk. You've 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 been part of our journey right from the beginning. You know, you saw it um, from its inception and preception. Um, so I'm excited to hear that part of the story as well. But um, so, um, Mel, how do you like your coffee? <clears throat> Love a flat white when I'm in blend. Um, that is my go-to drink and, um, but it's not just a flat white. There is always just a little, cause you have like the, the pumps on the syrups. Yeah. It's just like, if you just hit it, that's the amount that I want in it. Just a little, a, a little tap, a suggestion of flavor. Um, any particular flavor or, um, well, it just varies on the mood that I'm in that day. Um, <laughs> And my, my staff are really good to me. They always come up, get me, even get me a glass of water to make mm-hmm. sure I'm staying hydrated. Mm-hmm. Like I'm treated like a queen yeah. at that shop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then they'll ask me, okay, do you want your coffee? I go, yeah. And they go, what is it today? Um, and I have to sit back and think like, oh, do I want cinnamon or do I want pumpkin spice or caramel? I don't know. It just. <laughs> no. And then can they guess your mood? <laughs> I can't even guess my own mood sometimes. That's the thing. Like, no flavor equates um, a, a certain mood. It's just like, ooh, what am I it's, feeling today? You know, just to add a little spice into the mix of it. It's genuinely one of my um, sort of life pleasures is when well, any of our staff can make us a coffee when we come in and just sit at the table. You know, we haven't ordered it or haven't asked for it. And I just like, I've arrived. I know. That, that is like the epitome peak of, you know, it being is, like, I'm you know, here. I am a I'm king here. here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have someone serving coffee to me. You know, I know. It's, is, no, they're it all. a special experience. Yeah. They're all great guys at Blend yeah. Dundee. Like, no, good. You know. um, and, and Mel, you, you don't sound Dundonian. Um, I am. What are you talking about? <laughs> eh? Eh? Oh, you're, oh. you're figuring it out. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. Um, where, uh, so where are you from, Mel? I am from Wisconsin in okay. the States, so American through and through, but I did get my citizenship, so technically I am Scottish now oh, for well three done. and a half years, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but originally from Wisconsin in the States, and for those that don't know it, it's up in the north by Canada, um, huh. and so I have a very Canadian-esque accent and a lot of people who do come in say oh are you from canada and i go no i'm american no, yeah. but i'm not the type that gets offended about it you're not um, nice enough to be canadian is <laughs> no that i you? don't say sorry <laughs> not enough. as apologetic as <laughs> i just tell people off and walk away <laughs> just kidding um but um so i'm originally from just south of milwaukee in a place called racine okay um racine. and wisconsin's a mixture of native american and french kind of city so you have places like eau claire but okay. then you have a and you know different so what's next to you montana is your next state or what's, no? <laughs> no the next day over is minnesota minnesota um okay. and then you have the the dakotas and the then dakotas, there would be right. yeah, 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 yeah so we're Gosh, so yeah. but in retrospect i'm only an hour from chicago Okay. So I'm in the south corner along Lake Michigan. Okay. Um, so that would be the major city I would fly into. It would be Chicago. Like I'm just Chicago, in no. our north. Yeah, cool. um, 
but and you're uh, telling about racing is yeah so racine um no, racing is that um chemical warfare thing, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> so i thought <laughs> you were talking that, about rice that. at I mean, first don't flag this post up <laughs> anyone please you know <laughs> um yeah so racine is has its own little claim to fame so if anyone has seen the movie a league of their own with okay. um madonna, oh, yeah, madonna and movie. there's yeah. rosie what's her name rosie O- O'Donnell? O'Donnell? Yeah, it? that's it. Yeah, she's yeah. in it too. Um, and it's about about when the guys went off to war, there was a professional um, baseball league. Okay. And the women, the whole thing was the women came out of the kitchen, they went onto the field. Sure. Um, and one of the teams was the Racine Bells. Okay. And in the 80s, they turned into a fast pitch semi professional softball team. Okay. And I played for the Racine Bells. Hey, so that so is my well little claim to we'll, fame. But we'll, we'll can I mean, Google you. <laughs> many, many years ago. Many years ago. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> and what brought you to Scotland then? Um, well, that was that was a journey in itself. Um, went to university, got two degrees, one in marketing, one in advertising, and just always thought I would go into the corporate world, but just never felt satisfied. I just felt I don't know. It would just I wanted something more, and basically, a really long story short, but my life got completely flipped around. Um, um, I became a Christian mm. through this, through a really painful process, actually, where I just felt like I had nothing left. And um, I was introduced to a mission organization. And I just started having all these conversations and networking. And mm. someone mentioned Scotland. And my, I just started bawling, mm. like talking to this guy. Mm. And he was saying, like, all these, diff- these different things they do across the UK. And he mentioned Scotland. And I just started weeping. Okay. Um, but going back to, like, pre-Scotland Mel, I never cried. Uh-huh. Never cried. Like, which is weird because I cry all the time now, <laughs> but in Scotland that, made you cry. I don't right? know, it softened me. I don't know. Um, but as soon as this man said the word Scotland, I just started weeping uh-huh. and I just started crying. And my friends were staring at me, going, "She's broken. There's something wrong. Like we we've never seen this happen before." Uh-huh. And I just I turned to them. And I said, "I don't know what it is, but I'm supposed to be there." Mm-hmm. And I just knew that I needed to be in Scotland for. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know why. I couldn't explain it. Mm-hmm. It was just a really deep, resounding feeling in that moment of where I was supposed to be and what I was mm-hmm. supposed to do. Um, and so then I was like, well, what's the next step? I don't know. And so um, I knew someone in Georgia who knew someone in Arizona who then knew someone in Edinburgh okay. and then yeah. who knew that someone in Glasgow. In like, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, and like... And the person in Edinburgh was Alan Baird, one of the other directors okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. in Blend. And so we set up like initial Skype call, like the 11, 12 years ago now. And just, and he basically was like, we're looking for female youth workers, you know, yeah. to come in. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. So natural progression of getting a business degree, mm-hmm. let's go into youth work, oh, you yeah. know, makes oh, yeah. complete <laughs> sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so then I fundraised, I fundraised my salary and came over within like six months later um, and just sold all my possessions, sold my car, sold everything. Wow. Um, and just and you only knew Alan? Yeah, that was it, wow. which could be a very scary thought. Well, and then, so, yeah, <laughs> gosh, you know. No, we love you, Alan. Um, but yeah, I just got up and left and moved and, um, and did youth work in Erskine, just nice. right outside of Glasgow, okay. and did that for a few years. Oh. And, and what was your impression of Scotland when you first came across? It was very rainy. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one year. Is Wisconsin not a wet uh, part of the world? No? No, that... they call it the frozen tundra. Oh, okay. So it's okay. very hot in the summer times and very, very cold in the okay. winter. Um but I remember speaking to my parents on the phone at one point, and I was like, Mom, Dad, it rains every single day. And they're like, no, it doesn't. And, of course, they came over to visit, and they came in the five days. Yeah, it was sunny. perfectly sunny. <laughs> and literally, they got on the plane and left, uh-huh. and then it started pouring again. Um, but there was one point, I think I actually cal- like counted down my calendar. It rained 325 days out of the year, wow. one of my first years. Wow. Um, yeah. Especially being in Glasgow, where it just all yeah. the weather the gets sucks, Coast, yeah. you know, sucks right off the coast, and it was hard. It was a hard adjustment, and then 
didn't realize I had a vitamin D deficiency (laughs) on top of that. Like it's that first year was actually really difficult Uh of not even so much culture, so to speak, but actually just getting adjusted to like the small things where like Americans use their fork as their fork and knife, you know, and then seeing everyone use Knives. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> knives and forks and um, <laughs> and just little things like that. And just even though it is English, it really isn't English, you yeah. know, like especially doing with young people talking in slang all the time. Like, I don't I don't know what that means. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then especially when chatting to older people, like they use even more slang. Yeah. And so like, but one of my favorite words I ever learned was dreek. Yeah, dreek. And I'm like, well, that's the word. weather. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I always wonder who Ken was, you know? And um, <laughs> when I first gave it to the D, like, Ken, Ken. And I was like, who's this Ken? Who's Ken? And, gotta they, find and him. they've gone to get messages <laughs> from somewhere. Like, what, what you, where, what? Pieces. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, like, do you want a piece? Like, piece of what? Like, piece of my mind? Or I don't really know, but yeah, it's <laughs> like, good. oh, it's a sandwich. That's good. <laughs> so, no. um, but yeah. Yeah, it was the small little things like that mm-hmm. that actually made me more homesick than anything. Mm-hmm. And I actually think it might have been easier if I went to a more extreme culture yeah, yeah. where everything Language, was different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I could actually blame it on something. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's a deceptive. Obviously, uh, you know, Britain, not let alone Scotland, is, is uh, there is a neat way of saying it, but, you know, we think we speak the same language, but we don't. Therefore, we presume the culture yeah. is the same, and it isn't. Um, yeah. And once you get through those nuances, you're like, "Gosh, this is different." You know, yeah. it isn't just uh, a place that speaks English. It doesn't. You know? Well, even the humor. <laughs> yeah. Like I, when I first came here, and a lot of people will say this, like I was a hot mess when it came to the banter, because <laughs> yeah. people were, I would say, they were awful. <laughs> <laughs> but then they turn around and go, just banter, Mel. Just yeah, banter. we like you. We love the bands. <laughs> like, yeah. And I'm like, well, you're rude. Thanks. You know, <laughs> like you made me go and cry in the back corner because I thought you hated me, but you actually liked me. I don't know. It's yeah. weird, twisted psychology of it. it, it yeah, <laughs> um, and they test you that way. Yeah, it testing the, the the. I always say there's like a treacle layer as well in in in, in a Scots character where you never know where you. It, 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 very friendly, welcoming culture, but. There's also the sticky layer where you don't mm. know where you, where you stand with people, and then and then one day you're in the inside the fence, and and you don't yeah. know what you've done, um, but you're not in that sticky layer anymore. You're not that kept at bay area, um, yeah. and yeah, I was like, that, found that interesting. You know, very very friendly, engaging culture, but there was still a sense of being an outsider for a long time. Um, yeah, definitely. And sometimes continue to be, you know. But like you were saying, like Scots are very loyal. Yeah. Like they're a loyal, loyal yeah. group of Once people. You're so in, once you're, you're in, in, that's it. Like <laughs> you're let's take the pact and that <laughs> you know. Yeah. But then you like look back at it like yeah. and you know, different yeah. movies and history and stuff, and yeah. it very much was like that throughout yeah. history. So it's true. it makes true. sense. No. And 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 what, what bedded you then? What kept you here? Um <laughs> thinking about it to be honest I don't know Mm. um other than that I just kind of just fell in love with it I've Mm. always it's interesting because when I was younger I always said I hated change Mm. hated change but the older I've gotten even though I may not always be comfortable with change I always thrive off of it Mm -hmm. my personality thrives off of change Mm -hmm. and new scenery something different um because it equates to me as like a new adventure to go on, new ways to learn, new things to learn, um, new discoveries to be made. And so, um, you know, by by year three of doing youth work, honestly, like, it was hard. Like, youth work in the Glasgow area was really hard. Mm-hmm. It was difficult. But they say the best way to know culture, the best, is through young people. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like I had a great advantage mm-hmm. Um, kind of coming over and just literally getting thrown into the deep end. Mm-hmm. Um, and everyone was really gracious with me, just <laughs> was very patient with me throughout the journey. Um, and I think being an outsider helps. Like, I think sometimes if you're in, mm-hmm. um, it's probably a struggle to break through some of the sort of natural barriers that are sitting in the culture here. You know, whereas an outsider, you just presume, you know, they... You, you're not part of it, so you can you can get into places that others couldn't, yeah, you know, uh, or can't. Um, yeah. Yeah. But but thinking about it, I think now that I remember, once I got to year two or even year three, people were almost expecting me to leave. 
They're like, mm-hmm. oh, when are you moving back to the States? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I'm not. I hope that's not too much of a different, <laughs> yeah. you know, disappointment yeah. for you. And I honestly think that's one of the reasons, just subconsciously, that it naturally kept me going. Be like, well, I want, I want to prove them wrong, mm-hmm. that I'm not going to leave, that I love it here. Like, I love investing in people. Mm-hmm. And I love watching people grow. Um, and just, I wanted to pr- I prove people wrong that mm-hmm. I wasn't just going to run back to what was easy for me. Um, because those first couple of years were a struggle and I don't think that was like, I'm not ashamed of that in any way. Mm-hmm. And, but going to a different culture, different country with homesickness and like being, you know, learning to identify who your family is mm-hmm. when it's not blood family over here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, I think that was one of the motivations that I wanted to stay but by what year two or three, then blend became a thing. Yeah, okay. Blend became an idea, and I remember sitting in a room um, with Derek and Alan, and can't remember who else was there, but we were talking about blend, like yeah. um, because at the point in the church, it was it was all it was an acronym, and it was about doing blend values. Okay. Um, and and uh, what was the acronym? Just for people yeah. That so don't know. yeah, um, B for bless, yeah. L for listen, E to eat figure out how yeah. to spell and <laughs> for nurture and d for dare yeah. um and it was actually just uh something to put out to the people in the community saying mm-hmm. like listen we want to bless the community we want to listen to them we want to eat with them mm-hmm. or go off for coffee with them mm-hmm. we want to nurture them and we want to dare together mm-hmm. do something different together um and i remember alan going oh that'd be a really nice name for a coffee shop <laughs> <laughs> he did yeah. eight years yeah, later yeah. here we are <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and the more and more i kept thinking about this coffee shop being in the community idea that's when things really started to change for me especially going from youth work to working and help managing a coffee shop and being in the community because mm-hmm. i always flash back um to my university days i, I was a manager at mcdonald's mm-hmm. Um, it was the only job that was going at the time, and I had student loans to pay and yeah. a lot think, of bills I think it's a to great pay. Job. I think, you know, it okay. was the hardest <laughs> job I've ever had, yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like, those people whipped me in the shape in <laughs> terms of like processes and doing things right, cleaning things right. <laughs> you know, they always said if you have time to lean, you have time to clean. <laughs> like, that was, that was the biggest thing drilled in our head. And the guys back in Dundee probably laugh at me because I'm like, all right, get a rag, go dust something. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and that that was a really, really hard job. And the only hours that were available were to work from 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Wow. While I was in university, shift, right? yeah, so the night shift. Um, and actually, like, there was, like, only a couple other people on. We actually had a blast of mm-hmm. a time. I was 20 years old, crazy, had all the energy to stay up. Um, and after I finished my shift, I then went to all my classes wow. and then came home and slept, got up, did mm-hmm. any homework I had, and then went back to work and did it all again. Um, but what, the biggest thing that I noticed was being in the drive through at 4 a.m., and you would see people driving around the corner, ordering that cup of coffee, getting to the window, and they just looked miserable. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one wants to be up that early Mm -hmm. knowing they have to drive an hour to work, you know, probably Mm -hmm. for a job that they don't like. And just handing them a fresh cup of black filter coffee Mm -hmm. and just saying, I hope you make it a good day. And just smiling at them, Mm -hmm. genuinely smiling at them. They look at you and take it and go, thank you, I will. And it made me realize that whatever attitude I have, I have the power of influence to yeah. pass that on to someone else. Yeah. Even if it's working for a coming McDonald's in a drive through standing there at 4 a.m., freezing, like, as the window opens and shuts, especially during, like, negative 40 winters. It <laughs> wasn't the most pleasant job to have then. Mm-hmm. But and it, an, a customer came through at one point, and she said, you know what? Every time that you're on, she's like, I always have a good day, and Mm. I don't know why that is. And that's what really got me thinking, Mm. being like, actually, it would be amazing to be able to do something like this Mm. every day, to be able to have the power of influence and impact on people when the world is so hard the way it is. Mm -hmm. And then when the idea of blend really started coming into play, that sounds like, no, no, I want to be with that. Like, mm-hmm. I want to do that because I want to feel what I did mm-hmm. back when I was 20 years old. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of 
grew. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it yeah. just grew from there. Um, I, I, when I think about how naive we all were at that time, you know, ten years oh, ago, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, sort of collective knowledge of coffee and 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 um, yeah, and <laughs> a business or anything was was pretty poor. But but I think I think that this is a space that is important. That that it then it's always been about a people business. You know, mm. it, coffee was not secondary, but it was the mechanism. It was a framework in which people could be engaged with. Yeah. And and the power of what you just said, the power of attention, the power of affirmation, the power of um, seeing people, um, mm. in, in especially in a world where loneliness and, and isolation and detection has become norm, you know, um, it, it, it is such a powerful um, uh, privilege to be engaging literally with people. It, 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 isn't, um, it isn't some abstract thing. You know, or putting some nice tweet or Instagram picture. You're actually physically, physically meeting people and and serving them coffee or serving them something they need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and what they're needing probably is not just the coffee. They're needing to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's what you're sort of describing there with, with that forty degree minus forty <laughs> <laughs> customer in a car going. Oh my goodness! <laughs> I've got to go. <laughs> be a mis- you know no and uh, and and you've you've not just gone through ranks, but there isn't many ranks in Blend, but you've you've seen it all. You've seen Blend Perth, Blend Paisley, Blend Dundee. Well, what, how has that developed you? Or how has that helped you, your, you know, your journey? Or, or I think each of the shops offered something different for mm-hmm. me. So Blend Perth was so new, just working out all the little tweaks of everything and just trying to, like, like you said, trying to figure things out. Mm-hmm. How and things the work. Trying to kill you as well. Exactly. Yeah. Almost yeah. died many times. Yeah. <laughs> Even in Blend Paisley. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's happened in Dundee yet, <laughs> yet. so I don't know. And just keep my eyes yeah, peeled for that. Shop has that trying to kill you at some point, <laughs> doesn't it? And, uh, um, that's a story to ask her uh, off, la- off air. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Blend Perth was really a growing stage, mm-hmm. um, really observing stage because obviously coming from the States, having the background of business degrees and um, communication degrees, um, it's different there than what it is here. Um, And so coming across cultures, trying to learn and see like, well, in business, they don't do it like that there, but they do it over here, you know? So it was very observing and a very much learning curve, very much learning curve shop for me. Um, but especially almost putting those feelings that I felt in McDonald's and in, kind of into place, you know. Um, but there was a struggle because it was in the Glasgow area coming up to Perth. And so there was there was not too much I could really invest, you know, on a daily, yeah. daily, daily basis. But it was so there was so much to learn of processes, of yeah. even paperwork, of just different things and even learning a different type of subculture of Scottish culture, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. each city yeah. has its own culture yeah, completely. Yeah. So, you know, being in the Glasgow area and then going out to Perth, it, you know, different accent for yeah. one, um, different vibe, different feelings, like different people. And there was something very unique and special about that. Mm-hmm. So it was able to get me out of my own context and put me in a different one mm-hmm. and get to know a bunch of different new people. Mm-hmm. And honestly, that's where you and I really got to know each other yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. As well, well as we had some, I, I, you know, that that day with Matthew driving around. Um, one of the beautiful things we've <laughs> always done in Blend is when we have to go find equipment, we get on <laughs> eBay or Gumtree <laughs> or whatever, and then we find places all around U- the UK, and we spend a day in a van picking stuff up. You know, um, he says a day, and it's actually twenty three hours. It's twenty three hours, <laughs> yeah, twenty three hours and fifty nine minutes. You know, of driving. Uh, 900 miles um, meeting like 17 different people yeah. <laughs> find finding obscure <laughs> yeah start in laybys off motorways meeting you know moving things from one van to another handing <laughs> like packs of cash some over dodgy <laughs> feel <laughs> But also, um, yeah, drinking 19 cans of iron brew and, and getting so high yeah. <laughs> um, on the sugar and the whatever else is in iron brew that we were laughing for. <laughs> that, that is a sweet memory. And, and I think, Jed, like, I, that's been one of the 
that's one of the joys I think you know I'd like to encourage people if they think of the business it isn't just about the customer and and what you sell and whether you make profit and loss whatever it's it's about stories you can tell mm-hmm. you know it's about these memories these really strong memories of spending you know 23 hours in a van um <laughs> driving talking life talking um uh, having these important moments that are part of the story so even now i walk into any of the blends and i the, each couch has a memory each mm. each cake fridge you know it didn't just turn up in a pallet somewhere we actually went and got it from some back alley somewhere in newcastle <laughs> 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 getting worried about whether we get lynched or not you know and, and those <laughs> that's part of the the story you know that's yeah. part of um uh, that's where blends value the, the human wealth we talk about but also just the, uh, and that's what we're trying to capture in these in these podcasts as well to recognize that it isn't just about destinations or goals you know the journey is the destination goal mm. you know like the, the people you meet you know we wouldn't have met in other yeah. contexts and and you know, you're from, you know, I mean, even to think how surreal this conversation, you know, I'm from India and you're from America and we're meeting in Scotland. Halfway. To, you know, halfway, halfway somewhere, <laughs> yeah. You know, talking <laughs> about something that brought our lives together and, and, and you know, common passions. And, and I think that's that's an important thing to put into stories of people if they're thinking of their own business or thinking of mm. where, they, where they sit in life, uh, that it isn't just trying to be um, getting to a point you know that um it's sort of sitting even now and looking around you and seeing who's with you mm. um it's doing doing things together mm. you know journeying together and for for someone who's very much a goal setter you know mm-hmm. i can easily you get definitely sw- are. <laughs> <laughs> i can easily get swept away you know just thinking oh what's what's five years from now mm-hmm. you know even two years from now and i can get swept away within that of dreaming and planning and but then forgetting about what's happening right in front of me. Mm-hmm. And so that's one of my challenges that I've been trying to pull my back myself back into is to have my eyes open to seeing what's right in front of me and mm-hmm. who's around me and mm-hmm. who are these people and literally taking it day by day. Yeah. You know, it's good to have dreams and plans and um, goals. Like, it's absolutely great for that. But actually, if we get too focused on that, then we can miss out Mm-hmm. on so much is in front so of us true. and so that's one thing i've been trying to yeah. pull myself back to a reality and instead of just keep going well what's next what's next actually what's now is more should be the question what's happening now what's happening in our community around us who can we who can we bless who we can listen to who can we go out to eat with who can we nurture and who can we dare with mm-hmm. um so even those principles started within a, a community in a church that can literally be applied to anyone and everywhere, mm-hmm. you know, and getting the most out of the life that we're living. Um, but yeah. yeah, but yeah, and and and, and let's, if, if you don't mind, I mean, your, your faith is an important part of who you are, and and how is how has Blend helped that, or how have you, how has that been the underlying narrative of what you've done and um, what you want to, you know, what you're doing. Yeah, my, my faith is, is is everything to me. Okay. Um, it has seen me through so many dark days, mm-hmm. but so many good days too. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things that I keep going back and clinging on to hope. And I think the word hope is just one of my favorite words, is mm-hmm. that if we don't have hope in something, whether if it is faith or, you know, whatever people may identify, like what are people hoping in? Um, And that has seen me through a lot of my days, even like thinking about lockdown the past, you know, a couple of years. And um, it's it's crazy to say a couple of years now. Yeah, it's it's almost to the day. I mean, (laughs) you know, March 20th today is, you know, March 18th. So you're you're literally two years since we went into lockdown. Yeah. Um, But just thinking about who I am at my core values and what I believe in and what even focusing on just just humanity, I guess, Mm -hmm. in general, like they overlap, Mm -hmm. blend in my faith overlap a lot because as a Christian, I truly believe that we should be doing all these values just naturally, Mm -hmm. whether if Christians do it or not, that's up to them and that's between them and God, so, so to speak. But for me personally, if I can bless my community 
bless the people that come through that door mm. and honor every single person that comes to that door, mm. then I'm living out my faith as I believe it is. Yeah. If I yeah. can listen to someone in a non-judgmental way and give them the space to be and exactly for who they are mm -hmm. and who they've been created to be then i'm doing that mm -hmm. am i you know going out to to eat with people and to grab a cup of coffee listening to their stories and um walking alongside people then then that's that's that like who am i who am i nurturing who am i trying to train up to take my place basically mm -hmm. like you know who am i taking risk with you know yeah. like yeah. there's yeah. so much overlap between my personal faith and blend yeah. And but blend has been a place where I can freely just try to live out those values yeah. for myself in whatever way they yeah. mean to me. To, to, I, I think it's it's to allow a space to to wrestle with your faith as well. You know, like to not have it clean cut as if it's some you know you're sort of selling shampoo or something. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's actually to to engage with it and to recognize that. Uh, life isn't as it, it's not neat you know that that i believe something and therefore i do this but actually we wrestle with these things every day in, in our lives and the people we come across and 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 we have ups and downs like you say and 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 it's it's great to have an environment where that can happen mm. with with you know without being threatening you know to, yeah to, um, one of the the thing that i tell the guys in blend Dundee is that to always have grace, mm -hmm. that measure measure of grace, and that might be a very Christianese <laughs> word, you know, just to have grace. Mm -hmm. um, but I I just recognize at the end of the day I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to mess up and I'm going to screw up and I'm going to let people down naturally because I'm human mm -hmm. and I'm never going to pretend like I'm perfect. I'm mm -hmm. flawed, even though like my pride can get the better of me and tell me that I'm not, but I am. <laughs> um, but when we mess up and when we have failures and, and we fall short of whatever that may be, like whether if it's, a, it's a sweeping, you know, sweeping the shop at the end of the day or um, cutting a cake wrong or <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It could be as big or little as you want, but just to constantly show grace. Mm -hmm. Trust that people, you know, try to be the, see the good in people mm -hmm. basically and giving them the benefit of the doubt and just to offer grace to everyone. And my faith, that definitely comes from my faith, my mm -hmm. personal faith. I believe that if I've been given grace, then I should be freely yeah. giving that out. You share like, best what you've experienced yourself. Exactly. Absolutely. And yeah. who am I to say that, you know, yeah. like I'm not going to be the judge of anyone yeah. at all. And so if blend can be that place for people to come off the street exactly who they are, no matter what gender they identify as, mm -hmm. no matter if they're like if they're if they're straight, they're gay, mm -hmm. they're um, transgender. I honestly, mm -hmm. I personally don't care because I see the person as who they are. Mm -hmm. Like who, however they identify, and if that's who they are in blend, then they are loved and they are accepted mm -hmm. because that's what I believe that Jesus has taught me to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Um, and I know, like not all the world. Um, that label themselves as Christian sees it like that. Mm -hmm. But if I and the staff can create a place of just acceptance and um, we have it written on the back wall um, in the back of blend that says honor every single person who comes to the door. Mm -hmm. And I say that to everyone over and over again. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care if they're a drug addict. I don't mm -hmm. care if they're a user. I don't care if they're rich. Mm -hmm. I don't like, it doesn't matter. You honor every single person mm -hmm. that comes to the door. And if we continue to do that, and a lot of the times, like, the blend values will just enfold in that statement, yeah. you know, like blessing that person that comes to the door. You listen to that person when, if you, you know, <laughs> you, you can sit and eat with them. You can nurture them. You can dare with them. Like, but even honoring someone could be a dare for someone Absolutely. in itself. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. um, yeah, it's just something that I try. I know I try to challenge myself with, but I also want to challenge others with. So yeah. it's a, it's yeah, a dare. Yeah. It's yeah. a dare for me when someone comes in and starts, snapping their fingers at you saying, Oi, clean this table and you just want to turn around and rip their head off. <laughs> just yes. like, have grace, have grace, have grace. <laughs> like, yeah. Blue yeah. skies, blue skies. It, it, it's it's I remember um Victoria when we were opening Perth and we did get those those awkward but they weren't even awkward. They were they were nasty sort of customers. Um 
it was helpful to frame people sometimes as as wounded animals you know like mm. people are, people people have been bruised and battered by life and and you know if you try to go near a wounded animal it growls and wants to bite you because yeah. all it knows is pain and all it knows is 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 a threat to who it, who it is and i think we humans can be very similar to that 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 and so therefore we take it out on the wrong people yeah. <laughs> the very people who want to help us and and actually we've got to be understand that thing okay this is a i also see you know those awkward customers are probably wrestling with things that we've never seen mm. and well, what we see is the outcome we see the growl we see the the you know the teeth and the and the biting and it it so it's easy to then say well i want to kick the dog further you know it it it's you made it worse you know you've added to it whereas yeah. when you show grace and you've shown that place of nurture that longer journey uh, i love our awkward customers who become our most loyal customers yeah. you know i love it's just something very that's our human wealth that we've generated of of lives changed or transformed um because we were able to see through the ugliness mm. and and see the person for who they are yeah yeah um, and going back to what you said before just people just want to be seen mm-hmm. you know and like I call this cheesy, but the movie Avatar, above all things, like, you know, there's always the phrase in the the end where they say, like, I see you, Mm -hmm. you know, like, I see your soul, I Mm -hmm. see you. And I think there's something that that phrase has always stuck with me Mm -hmm. of just looking at people and whether if you're journeying along with them and you see their pain, you see their struggles, like some people will start, will come into blend as that refuge, as Mm -hmm. that safe place. And and they'll be able to feel exactly how they feel, whether if they're just, they're having a bad day, so they are expressing their emotions and they cry and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's amazing just to go over and say, like, I see you. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. you're allowed to be anyone who you want to be mm-hmm. in here, you know? Yeah, it's, it's I, 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 I think this is, this is going to be one of the bigger themes that we're going to come out of lockdown with of, of these spaces. Um, and, and I don't think, uh, you know, at, I think we in our coffee sh- world, you know, we, we see that it's such a privilege and we become safe spaces for people. But I think it'd be, I'd, I'd like to challenge even people listening that if they're thinking of businesses or of developing something, that they recognize that this is one of the important things that customers are looking for. You know, mm. whether it's a gallery or a gym or a car wash or w- whatever business you're thinking of, that, that actually how do we make people feel safe and belong and nurtured by the business you do totally because it doesn't yeah. even have to be coffee it doesn't you know it, 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 it it's any you know we we have the privilege of engaging and and because otherwise business is just transaction and mm. you can do that online that's no problem of course you can you know yeah go buy the thing and then and if that's all you are transactionally then then you're all you're doing ever is just competing with others for the product you're selling yeah whereas if it's relationships that you you don't put a value on it. The customer puts a value on it, mm. you know, and they, it's not the price they're paying. It's the value. So it's, it's, it's a completely different ecosystem of how you, how, tra- how we can interact and how we can create, um, how we can behave and, and, and the things we create in business. You know, yeah. I, I think it's, it's, uh, yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, that's just it's a loose statement a, or a challenge for people who if I listen to this thinking of starting something to remember that that, you know, start with the people first mm-hmm. and, and then whatever product or thing your idea you want to put into that um, will then find its narrative yeah it, it'll have to create clarity yeah um lockdown how was lockdown for you I was one of the few that probably actually really enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't think you're part of the few I think <laughs> I think a lot of people <laughs> I mean, I mean, I I'm just very aware. There's a lot of people that I know that have struggled through it, and sure. like, there, yeah, there were there were some days where there were very low days, of just being, like, almost thinking too much, being like, who am I? What am I doing with my life? You know, like there's almost too much space to think. Um, but I kind of just saw, I, in my head, I saw lockdown as like a a big sabbatical, mm-hmm. um, just a place to rest fully and to to dream revisit like what brings me joy um and just kind of like just 
self-focus without make that making that sound you know selfish and stuff but like mm -hmm. you got to be able to take care of yourself yeah, before you rest. can yeah and before you can help go. other people yeah. so it became a place where um like i had my dad email me over family recipes old family recipes yeah. and <laughs> god bless him he wrote up every single one of my so, grandmother's recipes mm -hmm. where you could it was very barely le legible uh -huh. but also it would just say ingredients and it would just be like, oh, pour a bit of milk in there <laughs> or like just just handful, you know, like not actual <laughs> measurement size. And so like, Lord bless him. He went and actually figured out stuff because he knows how I work. Yeah, I do not yeah. work like that. I have to have a recipe you to follow. You Exactly. <laughs> like you can always trust numbers. They will, all, they will always tell you the right thing. Um and so he sent them over to me and I was able to work through like my grandma and my mom's cookbook and stuff and just, and even some ingredients that we didn't have over here, I had to figure out an ingredient that like matched that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So like something simple as like, we have something called Colby cheese. Okay. It's like <laughs> a very mild cheddar. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's the best I can explain <laughs> it. Um, but cheddar doesn't taste the same as Colby. It's no. like a specific type of cheese. So okay. Wisconsin's also the cheese today. Um, you open my parents' cheese drawer, and there's about 10 different types of cheeses in there. And that's a very true statement. So we know our cheese, but like finding different substitutes, being like, no, Red Leicester was too far. Yeah. Like maybe medium mature cheddar, you know, stuff yeah, like that, yeah, where yeah. you're like trying yeah. to figure out, being like, well, we don't have that. We don't have blocks of cream cheese. We only have tubs of cream cheese. You know, like, yeah. so when a recipe says mean, yeah. four blocks, I'm like, how big is a block? I don't yeah. know. Is it 600 grams? Yeah. Is it 200? I'm not sure. So that was fun. Uh -huh. I was able to do that and take pictures and send it to my family at home. And, and they were just really proud of me. And, like, and it was nice to kind of um, experience something from home again. Mm -hmm. even, though, even though Scotland has become home, but it was like a nostalgia. Um like a nostalgic pastime of being like, oh, yeah. like my mom's mac and homemade mac and oh, cheese, you know. There was something, um, I, I think, I suppose we'll probably read up about it, but, you know, there was something powerful about how we went back to cooking and yeah. and and sharing and singing. I mean, um, you know, whatever, there were, there were some primal community spaces that we sort of came back to. I mean, I, I know our family, we... we we had we had six people in the house because uh, our nephews and nieces who were stuck here, um, and our meal times became like two hour conversations. Mm. You know, I and I genuinely still miss that. It was it was such a powerful space to sit around a table and just talk life. You know, talk about anything and everything, and um, and realize how important that is and how few people do that. Yeah, you know, and and how. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to find a means of recreating that in normality, you know, in, in mm. our busy lives. Um, I'd, I'd love to think of a place that would host a table on a, you know, like we just go and eat with strangers if that's what it took, you know, and, yeah. and, and actually created a communal sort of... Um, I, I, I've always had a, a powerful image of... of we talk about campfires in blend, you know, uh, yeah. um, and I, to me that's a very, very powerful image of the nomad, tra the traveling nomads, you know, mm. caravans gathering. coming to a place and gathering with strangers for the safety, you know, I in a land and just and then spending a moment. It's just an evening or a day mm -hmm. spent together in a place, sharing stories, sharing information and dangers whatever and then and then moving on you know um yeah. and i've always uh, i love uh, thinking about how what does that actually look like for our modern societies you know what because we're all sort of nomads you know yeah. <laughs> not just physically like we've traveled a long long way from our different countries but you know anyone who's someone who's moved from edinburgh to dundee is a nomad they're, mm. they're in a foreign land they're in a foreign place um and how where how do they find their safe space um to come and eat and nurture each other and then move on, you know? And, yeah. And, uh, uh, That's been one of the hard things about lockdown, I think, that has, in a sense, if you didn't have that other person or people in your house mm -hmm. to gather and have that space, a lot of people were left on their own yeah. or just even in, sadly, in abusive situations mm -hmm. and stuff. And so coming 
as we're slowly coming out of this pandemic, even though we haven't been in lockdown for a bit now, like the challenge is now, how do we gather? Like, how do we pull people out of those spaces where they've been by themselves for so long? And got used to it. And got used to it and actually very happy with their own company and Mm -hmm. actually explain like, well, that's good, Mm -hmm. but it's not healthy. You know, how do we get people out to gather again, but in a safe space, in a safe way so people feel safe and protected and guarded Mm -hmm. um especially with a lot of just uncertainties of especially with like the no mask rule coming off well (laughs) not soon anymore but Mm -hmm. you know but it's almost like a free-for-all happening how do we still protect those people Mm -hmm. that are feeling vulnerable or who Mm -hmm. are vulnerable but how do we gather again Mm -hmm. you know and 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 vice uh, sorry uh, the other side also how do do we challenge people to not be comfortable and to realize i mean i'm i know i'm training myself right now to to meet people again because i don't want to <laughs> I, I, being I, social I, is hard it's hard it's I, hard. I got used to my time i could zoom in i could do my you know convenience and my convenience whereas now i'm being i'm, I'm quite literally in process of con- saying yes to as many things as i can which are uncomfortable mm. to make the journeys to go to a place and meet people um to not go online uh as my default and I realized that I've needed to get trained for that it's not mm. I've got two years I've got used to being a moan and and actually it does take a challenge you know to my own yeah um and, and I think culturally it's going to be quite damaging because we've all become sort of bring it to me culture you know we're like little yes. Greek gods who <laughs> have little apps now you know <laughs> you can <laughs> order and, anything on come an and app feed and me grapes you. you know like, um and if it is in my way, then I get really angry with a late whatever, you know, it's, and I think that's not a healthy thing. You know, mm. I think life is about, there are uncertainties. We, we are meant to go and be with strangers. You know, um, uh, I was listening the other day, bizarrely, but it was Drew, gosh, what's the name? Who was a little kid in E.T.? Drew. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> And but she was talking about dating and how Dane, you know, how because now we swipe Tinder, whatever, left, right, whatever, it's taken away some of the 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 anxiety and and challenge to self to go talk to someone. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a healthy thing because sometimes it is in the ability to cross a room to talk to someone mm. that you discover some of our own fears and demons, you know? And, and you'll and, find that people easily will hide behind a phone or a tablet Absolutely. you know and like i mean it's it's sad because you even see it with young people mm-hmm. they'll text 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 like their whole life story to mm-hmm. you but then you go up to them in person being like oh how's it going how's this fine fine <laughs> and they just look at you like you're a weird alien yeah. you know um it's technology is so great but it's got it yeah. It's taken away that social aspect of like how to interact with yeah. each other, and, and that's why coffee culture. I'm I'm very very um, intentional that we remain. You know, we could easily become a drive-through or move out of town or be. You know, it, it does make a lot of sense in terms of how people are. But actually, you're then feeding into exactly the same anxiety and, yeah. and thing, and, and actually coming and being in a place, like creating a campfire space in a town. And seeing it as campfire, you know, the, the pub used to be that. This is not new. This is not something we've mm. invented something for a new age. It's ancient. You know, we've, uh, the old pub was the warmest room in the village. You you knew you could go in as a stranger and get fed and watered and listen to music and l- leave the next day and you'd be safe, you know. And, yeah. and, and I think subconsciously we, we've forgotten those spaces. Um, and actually it's more important now that we create those spaces. Yeah. Um, that would become a safe space for the moment that welcomes a stranger um, mm-hmm. and people leave with stories. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they no. meet new people that they never would have imagined yeah. ever I, being friends with, you know, one of the, one of the people we podcast, uh, we t- uh, did the podcast, we're talking about how blend is unusual because we have that long table where you could sit next to a stranger and ask if you can, pull up next to them while they work and you work and chat and it's like that just never happens so like <laughs> <laughs> you know they don't do it themselves in any other place where they will will do it and blend you know yeah. come and ask to sit next to a stranger and i'm like gosh that we've done something right <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what what where do you want to take blend what's what's your vision what do you see ahead for you <laughs> i mean uh, 
Are we talking about near or future? Are because you, I got the plans for the future. Have you? You, you, <laughs> I know we keep chatting about it, but you just wait 15, 20 years, there's going to be we're Spanish tapas, wine, <laughs> coffee shop by day, Spanish tapas by nice. night. Just game. watch this space. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> well, this is it. Well, then. Uh, but, I mean, that's just like a fun kind of like little dream Why to not? keep yeah. keep thinking like what if what if that yeah. could happen you know um but honestly especially for dundee um it's it's funny because i can see like this end goal of like it being that gathering space being this community hub where there's a bunch of different things happening in like dundee is so artistic mm-hmm. whether if it's dance art poetry there's there's so much talent in Dundee. Mm-hmm. It actually blows my mind of like how musical people are as well. You know, like there's so much talent around every single corner. In your musically talented, for those who don't well, know, Mel has a phenomenal voice. Is I dabble. Highly, no, 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 <laughs> it isn't dabbling. You know, next time you meet Mel, challenge her. Tell her to just uh, a cappella sing. You will, you will see what a voice she has. <laughs> Knowing me, I'd probably rap Gangster's Paradise. Well, even though, if that like, is, <laughs> like, you know, that would be fun. That would be fun. And um, she's a very talented <laughs> guitarist as well. So, oh, yeah. Making me blush behind here. No. Um, but I just, Dundee is so talented in general. And I haven't met the right people yet to make these connections happen. But I just see Blend in either soon or in a year of just being this like the analogy you always say the watering hole Mm -hmm. where it's just a huge gathering space where people can come together like you know and just being alive Mm -hmm. you know and um being that like glorified almost like safe place and stuff like coming out of the pandemic eventually and um like it'd be amazing if we could be open late every single night because mm-hmm. there'd be something going on, mm-hmm. something to deal with the arts and something, you know, things that we wouldn't even expect, like whether if it was like salsa nights or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't know. Like, I just think it would be amazing if somehow yeah. we could uh, partner. Bohemia, yeah. Be, yeah. Yeah. Bohemia. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what it is of just like every night you could turn up and there'd be something mm-hmm. different that mm-hmm. could push you out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, pottery making or something i don't i don't know it could be anything but i just see it as like this continuous turnaround of just giving back to the community giving Mm -hmm. back to each other something that's not gonna you know break your arm or leg in cost Mm -hmm. to join clubs or do these things but something that can organically just happen um that blend can help facilitate and you'll know that like you can come out and have like a decent cup of coffee have cake or something else. I don't know, whatever your your fancy is. And like, and just sit and be with a bunch of other people doing something that you've never experienced before or something that you love. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. I just see this. It's like a revolving door where it just keeps going around and yeah. around and around. Yeah. And you literally have to force yourself to jump off. Like, yeah. that's what I kind of see. Yeah. Um, and so if you're listening out there and have any <laughs> ideas, feel free to keep in touch. <laughs> no, <laughs> Come and true. find me and... I just like I see it just being a community, a place of community where every person from every walk of life can come and just be Mm -hmm. and gather, try something new, try something that they love doing. Mm -hmm. You know, Um, I don't know. I can see that being like the end goal. Sounds amazing, right? Sign me up. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's 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 fab. And and I'd like to talk about, um, well, we talked about Perth, so um, how about Blend Paisley? What was Blend Paisley like? Yeah, so Blend Perth was very much a learning stage. When first child. Yeah, the first <laughs> child of just me just observing the culture, learning new subcultures. Um, and when we opened up Blend Paisley, that was another whole different type of culture within that. Um but the more I learned, Blend Paisley became more of an enabling for me mm. of actually growing in confidence, being like, actually, I do know how to do this. I know how to do this and um, orders and procedures and different things like it was it was in an empowering place mm. of growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was good and different subculture once again. And that just kept building. And I never, ever wanted to get to a place where I felt like 
you know, even though like we joked around about the coffee thing, like when your coffee arrives to you without ordering, you've arrived, like Mm -hmm. (laughs) in a sense of like blend, I never wanted to feel that way. Like I've arrived, like I've learned everything that I could have. I just wanted to keep learning and growing and developing myself. Self-development has been a huge theme, um, in the past few months at Blend Dundee with the staff is like, how do we continue to further ourselves with mm-hmm. further education or mentally, emotionally been focusing a lot of the self-development and how we can further ourselves and be the best version of what we can be, mm-hmm. not just for the sake of others, but actually just for the sake of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And so Blend Paisley was a real huge a growth spurt, mm-hmm. um, for example. It was only there for this the couple of years. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when the opportunity was like, do you want to go to Dundee? I just went, yes, because that was the next. There was no hesitation of that uh-huh. um, because that was the next step of growth for me. And I'm just mm-hmm. naturally attracted to that. So by the time of getting to Dundee and then learning a completely another different subculture, new council as well mm-hmm. of learning the different grooves and different ways you have to go through to mm-hmm. to get your bin collection set up <laughs> and <laughs> all these different things and um, yeah and so it just kept it kept growing from there yeah. and, um, and and I think that's an important point to make that that not everything arrives um, ready you know it, yeah. it, it's it's developed it's it's I think. We're culturally so used to products that we only see the end game. You know, we mm. we we take it out of the box and say this is it. Whereas you know, business or any of this is is you're you're, you're baking a cake. You're you're making it happen. You're 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 having to go and get the ingredients. You know, and and to to make it happen. So therefore, we've almost got to be kind to ourselves to not expect it. Like if it hasn't happened now, that it'll take time sometimes you know a stage yeah. is just a stage that is preparing you for the next stage yeah. um i mean I, I, you know dundee was quite a brave move for you because you you moved lock stock and barrel you know you <laughs> you know having been in in paisley um or erskine for nearly seven years or something yeah. and then you were like all right i'm ready i'm moving i'm gonna buy a house no not even buy a house just go and rent a place in a new city i've never been to um but i think you do that because one you've done that from Wisconsin anyway yeah you know you've moved you understand that but then also there's so some people aren't ready for that like they they want to do the big they want to dive from the highest board on the first jump and Mm. it it doesn't life tends not to work for that and (laughs) and actually we've got to like uh, like lifelong learning you know everything every day every week every month can be a part of what allows the longer journey to happen yeah and the important thing to remember is that it doesn't have to be like across the country no. move it can literally be you know just the next town over but it's being aware of that self-development being like where what is the next step i can take for myself mm-hmm. how do i get it how do i get there and if it's still staying in your same city well that's great mm-hmm. like i mean logistically that is great <laughs> but what is you know, is it applying for a new position, new role, whatever mm-hmm. that looks like to anyone? You know, it is actually just putting that first step forward mm-hmm. and opening the door, seeing what it looks like and just taking it. Mm-hmm. And so even going back to blend values, like the dare is like one of the biggest ones. Like, how can I mm-hmm. how can I be a risk taker, mm-hmm. but do it safely? And especially being within Blend, that was the safest place to do it. So, yeah. like, even yeah. though it was going from Glasgow to Dundee, yeah. yes, it was scary, yeah. but it was exciting, too, yeah. because I knew I was safe. Yeah. And so it's like the dare comes out of the nurture space, you know. It yeah. allows you a sense of, yeah, it, you can't, it's not a standalone, you know. It, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I say, you, you felt safe because there were people with you. There were others who felt the same. Mm-hmm. There were, you know, it, it was a managed risk. It yeah. wasn't just um, um, whim. <laughs> yeah. It also just was exciting to see, like, almost in that sense, like, what else could I do? Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, for everyone who's been jumping on the train of in- the movie Encanto recently, <laughs> you know, when is <laughs> always kind of bring it back to Disney. Um 
Isabella literally realizes that she can do other things than mm-hmm. what her family or her mm-hmm. abuela told her that she could do. Mm-hmm. You know, she realized that she can be so much more than what she thought. Mm-hmm. But, and if relating that to like our own selves, if we are just aware every step in our journey of like what more we could be, mm-hmm. imagine how far we, like all of us could go instead of just staying in the same, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, autopilot. autopilot yeah. yeah. Being yeah. in the autopilot. Like I always tell the guys in Dundee, don't go into autopilot. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you want things to be creative. You yeah. want things to be, you know, exciting. Yeah. You know, it's all a part of the journey. And, and, and again, I'm just squeezing it because uh, this is more important to me than anything uh, you've said at this point is, is you're not meant to do it alone. You know, like yeah. self empowerment can become just self centered, you know, like, you become the only person in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think life isn't meant to be like that. We're meant to do things together. It's, 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 in our, it's in our interaction with others. Like even right now, someone who's trying to just better themselves, there's a limit to what you can better yourself with. You know, like you can yeah. do, you can, yeah, you can make it a bigger, but it's, it's all contained by you. Whereas part of our delight is the others. It's, it's who else you can take on that journey and, or who else you can be with on the journey is part of the journey. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's what makes the, the, the bigger delight, whether you're married or whether you're just with a bunch of friends. Mm. Um, I read recently about, uh, it was just a fascinating article about four single moms who went and bought a house together. <laughs> right? And I was like, that, why, why aren't we thinking more often of that? You know, and 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 to say, yeah, let's let's do things together. Let's go and <laughs> you know, there's um, I don't know who said it, but you know, you want to go far. Sorry, if you want to go fast, you go alone. If you want to go far, you go together. Totally. Um, I think society has told us that companionship equates to a romantic mm-hmm. partnership with someone, mm-hmm. but actually, it's it's not. Like nah, that's my journey over the past so many years is actually like companionship can be you Mm -hmm. it can be my flatmate it can be my best friends it can be my dog it Mm -hmm. can be you know my co-workers it can be so many different people but I have to be open to accept that and get people in around me and it doesn't have to be romantically it can be perfectly platonic and it's there's something beautiful beautiful about that and that's what community is Mm -hmm. community isn't just a romantic relationship it's actually mm-hmm. just a bunch of like-minded people even if you're not like-minded yeah. but just people for gathering together yeah, yeah. and a, just it's a campfire for the evening <laughs> and pushing each other forward into those dreams into yeah. those journeys even if like they are ridiculous but it's yeah. it's so much better it's people seeing you yeah. and you're being seen and you're doing it together so therefore you're not alone yeah. in that so journey good. it's so beautiful good. yeah and uh, i i don't want to make too much of this but I, um one of the things i love is is um you're a woman um yes <laughs> and <laughs> and you know you found i love being able to support you to be who you can be and and just how you've thrived and stepped up and um how, how have you found that journey and how you know what have you been some of your challenges as you see it or um so I, I, because i see sometimes you're like you guys are the pioneers, you know, you're, you're, you're opening doors for others to see possibilities. And do you see yourself as that or, um, as like a pioneer or in, in like as a woman as a, or as a like woman? <laughs> yeah. In, in a, in a, in a workplace and work environment, staffing. Yeah. I mean, I think like, like, especially being a single woman as well, mm. like that has not been an easy journey whatsoever. Because if you didn't have like a man or a partner behind you to back you up mm-hmm. as being that like that growl face behind mm-hmm. you, like almost people don't take you seriously, mm-hmm. especially having an accent and coming in with it. Like I couldn't tell you the amount of times people have come into the shop to try to sell something. Oh, can I speak to the manager? Mm-hmm. I come out and they go, you're the manager Mm -hmm. and they automatically think i'm 10 years younger i'm a kid Mm -hmm. and it's like no i'm educated thank you Mm -hmm. like i've lived a lot of life Mm -hmm. i just don't look like it Mm -hmm. you know and just and the 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 constant thing being like well you're not from here so you don't know Mm -hmm. it's like it doesn't make me stupid Mm -hmm. you know like i have learned a lot about culture so there's been a lot of obstacles Mm -hmm. of just different thing but different things and and it's been frustrating. Um, 
because like I know like even starting Blend Dundee, like I had to get you on the phone to call someone up because someone wasn't taking me seriously, yeah, you know, Skips and yeah. it's just, it's annoying. Like, why do we still live in a world that's like that, mm -hmm. you know, where we should be empowering each other, not the basis of sex, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so it is frustrating, but almost it's empowering at the same time too. It's like, well, I've done it. If, <laughs> yeah. I in mean, spite of, I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it is exhausting, but it's so sad satisfying and such a blessing to look back to being like we've come this far you know and it's had its hurdles and its jumps and but now especially being as a woman and as like I don't mean to keep high but as a single woman mm -hmm. like you can empower other single women mm -hmm. saying you don't need you know you don't need a man to do it you know like that mm -hmm. type of saying or you don't you know you can do it just on your own back mm -hmm. you know if you have the time and the dedication and if you have the willpower like you can accomplish anything you know that you wanted that you put your mind to and I know that can be a very American mindset mm -hmm. um and that was drilled into us from a very young age being like whatever you want to be you can do it mm -hmm. um sometimes that's good sometimes that's bad <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. so imagine a, a, a an 18 year old male in Wisconsin or in Airdrie or in Hull you know listen to this um what 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 what's your your advice to that male? Don't be lazy. Honestly, like as like it's too sometimes easy to get focused and get into your own mind to say like, well, I can't do that because of this, this, and this, and this, or I'm not educated enough. I don't have the right degrees, and I don't have this or that. Like you can easily create excuses for yourself mm -hmm. far too easily these days, mm -hmm. and it's once you get into that mindset, it's just all lost. Mm -hmm. And so the biggest thing I could say is, just don't be lazy. If you have a dream, just go and do it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's on your own backside to do it. And like, no one's going to sit and hand things to you. If I, I've seen it with so many young people, they're just, they either graduate university and they just wait for the gold platter to come yeah. to them. Yeah. And honestly, like if yeah. we're waiting for that to come to us, it's probably most likely never going to come. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes you have to start at the bottom of the totem pole to mm -hmm. work your way up. But you know what? People see hard work, mm -hmm. and they see integrity, and they just see they see you grow, and that mm -hmm. does get rewarded. Mm -hmm. And so if you want something, then just open the door and go. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit with the door closed mm -hmm. on your phone Googling different ways of how to get rich or mm -hmm. whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. but actually just... Just go. Yeah. Just take the first Start step. Climbing. Start the first, climbing a mountain. Yeah. The first step is always the hardest, but once yeah. you get the ball rolling, it's it does get easier, yeah. and you go a lot farther than what you realize that you can go, um, because nothing, not a lot of things will just get handed to you. Mm -hmm. You have to work for it. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's fab. Yeah. well, Mel, it's it's been a pleasure. I mean, I'm, you just I I love having got to know you and. You know, like mm. uh, it just, you know, uh, it's it's just one of the delights of, of even having this business. I, I come back to this whole human wealth. You know, the just the nuggets you find of people and, and characters, and and um, and and you and I have spent a lot, some decent time together. You know, mm, yeah, <laughs> um, and a lot of memories, and it's it's just so powerful, and, and you know, it's it's inspiring, and but also it. The, you 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 are our poster girl because <laughs> you you're the you're the person like it's easy for us as directors you know, to be whatever having thought of these ideas and think that we're the ones developing but we're not it's it's our it's our staff and then our, our, our the people who've come into that journey who've bought into and and lived it far more than us you know and that's really inspiring and 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 I want to thank you for that you know and and for those who you know know Mel will will. Um, you know, I want to encourage you to to get to know her more. You know, find the backstory. There's other stories we haven't talked about today, which I know of. But mm -hmm. I think you have, you know, you have had experiences, uh, not all good, you know, which which are which are so empowering. And and knowing how far you've come and and where you're at now is, you know, I just want to thank you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, <laughs> you're inspiring, and and I'm I'm excited for 
Dundee blend. You know, I love. There was a time I think um, in November when all the four directors we were gone away for some retreat or something. So, um, and you were in charge. You know, there was not, and, and no, and you were also in on holiday somewhere. Yeah. And and, <coughs> and yeah, that's right. And and blend was running by itself. And I'm like, this is this is so powerful to think that that it's it's gone past. <coughs> almost two generous steps, you know, that people are buying into the idea and living it um, without any originals or founders or whatever. And I'm like, that's what we want to try to create. Um, that long after we're gone, um, I mean, I, I commonly use the analogy of orchards, you know, people who eat fruit from trees were planted because, you know, we'll never see that fruit. <laughs> um, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I think Dundee is, is, yeah, blessed to have you. Um, well, it's easy when you have a great vision of wanting to live out the values of Blend. People do jump on board with it very easily because they want to be a part of something special and something worthwhile. Um, people want to be seen and people love making people feel seen, you know. Um, so yeah, no, thank you for giving me the platform and the space to grow and to be who I've always was meant to be, so... Thank you. Oh, well, thank you, Mel. <laughs> um, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Cheerio.